Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to show you how to get everything set up and working to build projects directly to your Android device. So I normally like to get straight into the content but I just wanted to take a few minutes in this one just to cover a few of the general hints tips and how to find your way around if this video doesn't work for you especially in the future when different versions are uh, updated and changed to try and keep this a little bit more relevant for a little bit longer. So I've made this mistake previously. I've done a very similar tutorial in the past, uh, and the mistake I made was to specify the versions that I was using and sort of exact bits of software to download and where to get them. So I'm gonna try and make this a little bit more general and give you a good idea on where to look if things don't work out. So the first thing I just want to go through is when you're installing anything for Android inside of Unreal, there are three links that I would always check, first of all, just to make sure you know that you're downloading the right things, because like I mentioned, the stuff that I download and use today in a couple of months time probably won't be as relevant, but the setup and the process will be. So the first thing is the Android game development uh, web page here. This has pretty much uh, everything you need regarding links and the steps on how to get things installed. You can see it's got things like setting up achievements, ads, and everything like that. So I'll provide all of these links in the description below, so you don't need to take these down now, but uh, these are the ones that I'd always recommend coming to. From this page, you can see we've got the link to installing Codeworks, which is the next page. This is really handy, and this is one of the things that I highlighted a little bit too specifically previously. So at the moment, we're going to be installing the 1R6U1. This is one of the things that in the future you may want to come back, check, how, uh, check the date on this video being posted, how far ahead it in the future you're watching this, and just double check that this hasn't been changed because this is one of the things you want to keep in mind. So do remember this number. Come back here to see if it recommends R17 or something and remember to use the up-to-date version. But this page is going to show you how to get the code works installed on the system, where to find it and things like that. And I'll be doing that in the video in just a moment. And then finally, we've got the Android quick start page. And this is going to be how to actually get everything working in your project, how to set up a project for mobile devices once you've got the previous step done. So these are the three links that I will provide. I'm going to do everything on screen today so I shouldn't miss anything. And if you follow the steps exactly, they should work. But if for any reason anything changes or anything doesn't work, come to one of these pages, have a look through what, uh, what your problem is, and you should get an answer, especially somewhere here. Okay, so first things first, and that is that we need to get the code works installed. And this is very simple. You don't need to go to the Android web page specifically to do this. You can do if you wanted to get all of the software development kits. But all we need to do is if you navigate to the location of your Unreal Engine installation. So for me, that is on the C drive, the program files. And we're going to go to Epic Games, the version of the engine that you want to install this for. I'm going to go to the 4.19 because that's the only version I have installed. We want to go to the engine folder, then the extras. And then finally, we're going to go to Android Works. And I say finally, but there's one extra folder. We want to go to the Win64. And then inside of here, we have our CodeWorks Android for Windows. And we've got the 1R6U1. And you'll see that that actually relates to what the current version is recommended for the engine. So usually, that's a pretty good failsafe. If you're doing it directly from the engine files provided, you really can't go wrong. You can only make it a little bit harder for yourself if you try and get all of this through the Android SDK web page. So we're going to use this, we're going to install this, and I'll run through what we need to get installed to get everything up and running. Okay, so when the CodeWorks application loads, we're just going to hit next. Uh, we can hit next a couple more times until we get here. And what we want to do is choose the directory first of all. Now for my PC, I have a lot more space on the D drive, so I'm just going to change this from the C drive to the D drive. Uh, they tend to be best kept in the structure because that is the structure that most programs will know to look for the different SDK and JDK packages. And with that selected, I'm just going to hit next. This will extract everything it needs to, and then we can actually start installing things. Okay, now this is one of the important pages. So when this is loaded, the first thing we want to do, we have this drop down up here, and this is where you want to really make sure that you have the correct version being installed. And again, this is at the moment R16U1. This may change in the future, so double check that you have the correct option selected from this drop down list. Uh, we can tick to have this automatically resolve the dependency conflict. We can do a standard installation. We don't need the full set of packages. That would be huge. Um, and there's nothing that we really need to customize. So we can just let this do the standard thing. Now, this will pop up with an issue that I don't have a certain thing, the Integra Visual Studios package installed. And that's actually perfectly fine. Uh, we can just skip that unless you want to do 
debugging for the C++ side of things in the actual Insight Tegra SDK, but that's a lot more low level than I know a lot of people are going to need for this. This is just to get something up and running and building in the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the option to unselect this, which will let us then continue. It does change it to custom, but that's fine. And then we just need to accept all of these boxes and hit accept. Now this is going to take a while depending on your system. This is actually going to be installing all of the SDK for the Android development kit and that's going to get us ready then to move on to the next step where we can create our project and link everything so it knows where all of the dependencies and everything lie. Okay so when CodeWorks is finished you'll be greeted with this page and we can just hit next. Um, I'm going to tell it to remove the, the log files, I don't need those and I don't want to browse the documentation and then we can hit finish and we'll get a warning saying that we need to restart the PC. Uh, we can do that a bit later. I actually, uh, just to show that everything's working, you don't even need to restart the PC to get this to build it in the project. So the next step is to go over to your Epic Launcher. We're gonna start a new version of the Unreal Engine or open an existing project if you have one. And all I'm gonna do as soon as this is loaded, I'm gonna create a blank project. I'm not even gonna make it a mobile project. We're gonna set all of this up manually. And I'll just take away the starter content because that's not something we're going to need. So I'm going to have a blank blueprint project. I'm going to put this in my projects folder. So I'll select the Unreal projects folder and I'll just call this one the mobile test. With that done, I'll remove the starter content. We don't need anything there. I just need a level that we can load that we can look at. And I'm going to create that project. So this is going to be where we set everything up. We're going to associate the SDK files and everything with this project. And I'll also show you how to get the Android project settings in place. So with this done, there's not very much that we need. In fact, we're going to go to the project settings. Um, I'm going to come in, I'm going to actually save this map so that we have a map to view in the game. So I just create a new folder. We'll call this one maps and we'll just call this one main. Inside of this, we want to go to the maps and modes inside of the project settings. We're going to leave the default game mode as it is. And we'll just make both of these maps load the main map when we uh, when we build or enter the engine. And then the important thing that we want to do is we're going to come down to the platforms options. And the first one we want to change is our Android. So it says that the project isn't configured for the Android platform. So we'll hit configure and that will go away. We'll also have this notice here. This is relatively new. This is maybe a 4.17 or 4.18 change where it doesn't use one of the older Gradle versions of the, the SDK options. It uses the Ant build, I think. Uh, it says 4.16, but it's definitely not that long ago. But all we need to do is hit the Accept SDK license. We'll agree to this, make sure that this actually goes away and accept that. And that will allow us to make one of the options a bit later. And uh, we need to do this or else we can't build anything anyway. With that done, we want to make sure we have the correct build versions. Now, this is another thing where I'm going to specify a number here, and that's what I'm working with at the moment because I know it works. But in the future, this is likely to upgrade. For instance, at the moment, it seems to think that the newest buildable version is 21, and I believe it's actually an i24. But I'm going to keep this as a minimum of 21 and a maximum of 21 because at the moment, I think this works for all of the mobile AR and VR platforms. So we'll leave those as 21, but again, if anything doesn't work with your build, come back and check here as well. Have a look on the official web pages and see what the most recent and up-to-date version is for you. With that done, we'll move down. We want to tick the ARM64 and then untick the ARM7. If you try to untick the ARM7 by itself, it won't let you do that, so make sure that you have ARM64 ticked first. You need at least one of these installed or uh, selected. And then finally, we can configure this for the Play Service Store, although we're not going to use this. And that is pretty much everything done here that we need to do just to get this building. The next thing we want to move to is our Android SDK. And this is where we're going to associate the files that we've just installed. So remember where you've installed your SDK. And the first thing we want to locate is our Android SDK files. So we'll click on this. For me, it was the D drive. And remember, we had this, I installed this here, the NVIDIA and the NVPack. So if we go to the NVPack, select the SDK Windows folder, and that's going to be our location for that. We'll press this again, go back a step, and this time we're selecting the NDK. So find the Android NDK folder. And we're just going to go through and pretty much match all of these up with the folder name. So the next one is the Ant folder. So we'll find the uh, Apache Ant. And then finally, we've got the Java. So again, we'll go back one folder, and this is the JDK folder. So assign that to the Java. 
So just here, we want to make sure that our Android version is the same one we used in the other settings. So it's going to be 21 at the moment. And generally I find you can say latest, but it's also normally safer to just change this to be the same version that you have here. And that should work. And the one final thing we can do is we can set the name for this project. So in fact, if we go back to Android, we can see here that we've got the project name, uh, the company name. So you need it to be the com dot your company. So for me, this could be the channel name. So I'll change this to dev enabled. And then you can change the, the name of this. So this will be what the application shows as on your device. Now, if you leave it as it is with the, the brackets and the higher case project, uh, it's quite cool. It's quite interesting. This should build as mobile test to my device. So I'm just going to leave it as it is because that will be perfectly fine. So with all of that done, there's one other step, but hopefully you've got this done already. You need to make sure that your device is in developer mode. You need to hook your device to the PC. And if you haven't done the developer options already, just Google um, Android unlock developer and you should, you'll find a very simple explanation of where to go inside of your phone to get the settings to do that. Once you have that done, you need to make sure you have your device debugging enabled, plug that into the PC and you're ready to go. With all of that done, we can go down to the project settings. We can see that the Android is an option and I'm gonna select the ATC options. Uh, it says that the license hasn't been accepted, but I've literally just done that. So we'll accept the license again. Maybe I need to scroll down. We'll agree to that. Make sure that this is uh, grayed out, although I've done that twice on the video. We will go back and I'll try that again. So we'll go to package, Android, ATC, and I'll just build this to the desktop and then there's one final step and I'll show you how to get this onto the device. Okay, so if all of that went well, you should have had a small pop-up down here saying that the build was successful. I didn't turn the recording on fast enough to capture it, but, but that has all gone through successfully. So back on the desktop where I built this, all we need to do now, remember with the phone connected, which is important, and in the developer mode with the debugging enabled, is we're going to go into the new folder and we will double click the install folder now this is important because like i mentioned this is going to install this directly to your phone so it needs to be in the debug mode so it can actually find this and it'll build it straight to the device so again that has all gone through successfully there what i can do now i'll just double check i can find this on my phone so i've now got an app called the mobile test and if i press this this has launched this into the first person mode with an analog where i can move around now i can't actually show any of this because I don't have any of the uh, recording software for my device, but all of this is working. Uh, I've done everything in regards to all of these steps on screen. I haven't restarted the PC or anything. So I've just been pausing this whilst things have been set, uh, setting up and installing, but I've made sure to record absolutely every step I've taken to get this working. So with that, uh, if you followed the same steps as I've just provided, you should have a working build on your device now. Now this is mainly to prepare for future videos. In the future, I intend on coming back and doing some mobile VR, maybe some general mobile development, and hopefully some mobile AR builds as well. So hopefully this is gonna prove useful for anyone who wants to follow the rest of this series of tutorials. Otherwise, I've tried making this just a very much a standalone project as well. So you've got your test project for the mobile device and you can get these builds working with these steps. So hopefully that proves useful. I'll be leaving this video here for today though, so as always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. If you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming out on the channel, uh, including these VR and AR tutorials I have planned, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.